Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Avarice Podcast. What's your pronoun? I'm just kidding. I know what it is already. You're an it. I'm an it. We're all its. So let's get to it and have some fun doing it and shit and stuff and things. So, uh, I gotta confess, I feel like a bit of a dipshit. I was going to watch Jason Goes to Hell the other night and record a commentary. And I was fully prepared to do so, only to discover just before beginning that Jason Goes to Hell had been removed from Netflix, as had Jason X, which of course would be the next one in line. So, somehow, over the years, I forgot that I actually had Jason Goes to Hell. I, I don't know why I have it. I don't like it. <laughs> Somebody must have given it to me because they, they know I like horror movies, and they probably themselves are not a horror movie buff, so they probably asked my wife if I had it. She said no, and they got it for me, not knowing that it's not a very good movie. Little, I uh, I hate to let the cat out of the bag so early there as far as my opinion of the film, but this is just, uh, it's a weird swing and a miss. I don't, I kind of understand where their heart was at and the idea behind it, but it's just not executed well. You, you feel like you've been sold a bag of goods as far as the content of Jason is concerned. So, if you've never listened before, a lot of the times I watch a movie or a TV show, I do commentary over the top. Sometimes it turns into just a regular ass podcast and I don't talk about the media at all. But most of the time, I am speaking about the film, what's on screen. If it's something I have admiration for and a movie I actually like, I will usually have insight and... uh, admiration use that word twice in one sentence allow myself to introduce myself but if it's a movie like this one that i don't really care for too much i'm probably gonna do my best to take the piss out of it and goof on it because it's that's what it that's all it's really open for in terms of a commentary can't i can't really do a serious commentary on jason goes to hell i'm sorry folks it's just not in me i'll do my best to provide what knowledge i do have about how this train wreck came to be but uh if you want to hear me do my best effort at a commentary go and listen to some of the earlier ones in the friday the 13th franchise or listen to the one for scream one or the some of the early halloween movies if you want to listen to me be kind of a fanboy go there but if you want to listen to me bitch about how bad a movie could be stay here Ooh, coffee is hot. I start every podcast by making a cup of coffee. Then I sit down here at my coffee table. I take a couple hits off the bong, and then I start the film. Now, today, in the interest of saving time, and because I'm not particularly looking forward to savoring the flavor of this movie, I'm just going to go ahead and start it preemptively before I even burn the bowl here. So, if you are going to watch along with me, get prepared, because we are going to be pushing play in just a second here. Alrighty, press play in three, two, one, play. Okay. If it feels like I'm a bit discombobulated and I'm not flowing as smooth as I normally do, this is the first time ever that I'm attempting to record a podcast during the day. So it's a bit uncomfortable for me. I'm not quite in my my proper element. It doesn't feel right. It's not my routine. So bear with me a little bit. Hopefully I'll get over the hump and uh, it'll start to be more natural. Yesterday was Father's Day. I shorted myself on sleep so that I could get up and hang out with my family. And as a result, I went to bed super early and didn't record anything last night. But I woke up very early because I went to bed so early. And that left me with extra time during the day today before anybody gets home. 
So I'm seeing what I can make out of it, and maybe this will be a new thing. Plus, I had noticed that maybe recording at night wasn't the best thing because my brain was just not firing on all cylinders. My mind was exhausted from the day, and the words weren't coming very easily, even though at the beginning of this, let's be honest, they weren't coming that easily either. And uh, I, during the day, my mind would be on fire with things I wanted to talk about, and the thoughts would be connected, and then I'd sit down to do the podcast, and just none of it would be available to me anymore. So maybe the answer to that is switching everything to the day, not staying up so late, getting up earlier, and just doing it all, packing it all into the day. One issue I'm already seeing with that is like what I've done with today. It's, I've been going pretty much since I woke up, and doing this podcast now makes it feel like I've just been doing shit all day. Whereas before, I would do shit for most of the day. I'd have kind of a break, eat dinner with my family, hang out with my wife, etc. And then at night, I would record the podcast. And it would kind of break it up and make it feel less like a marathon of work. But we'll see how it goes. One thing that they don't miss on in this is the nudity factor. We're going to get to see her tiggle biddies here coming up, I believe. I know there's definitely titties in this. We'll just suffice to say that. And I think they go like the the Terry route and and have like in just full nudity. I think you get to see that nice hip flesh that's always hidden, you know, that little bit of hip flesh. That the panty strap covers just that little hip flesh there that forbidden area between the rib cage and the butt cheek just that little strip right there that you're, that you're not ever allowed to see or touch or lick or kiss excuse me for a minute I'm gonna need some time So we don't know it yet, but she is an undercover FBI agent. <coughs> and she's luring Jason in. <coughs> I th Am I remembering that right? You just stay in here for the weekend or what? There was not shit in that medicine cabinet. <coughs> <coughs> they sent an FBI agent out to Camp Crystal Lake to catch Jason. This is trying to be too realistic and it's not capable of it. Here we go. God damn. Gotta love Friday the 13th movies for a good hot chick. Most Friday the 13th movies. Some of them miss it entirely, but this one got it. We're in there. I think she's blonde now, oddly enough. Clearly not natural. Ayo! Aw, oh, that's when you cut the power out, Jason. It couldn't be like 30 more seconds. You weren't even wet yet. Put on clothes. You don't have like a pair of... Come on, I know you got a pair of sweatpants. You're a girl in a cabin by yourself. You've definitely brought sweatpants in a book. It's supposed to play like she's not undercover because we don't... We're not supposed to know that. It'll ruin it if we know that. But... I think an undercover FBI agent that was trying to lure Jason in would get dressed. Damn, that was a hell of a hood slide, especially wearing that towel. <laughs> what is this video game music? Like, reminds me of a Super Mario Brothers level. <laughs> Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. 
Oh, and Jason looks like uh, he was cooked for too long and he started bubbling and he's about to burst. His head is like a hot dog that's been microwaved for too long, but not quite long enough that it explodes. It's just got that bubbly... It just looks melted and bulbous. And the skin on his face has grown around the mask and the straps to the point that it's like a, a horse harness that's grown into their face. I don't even remember how the last movie ended. How did Jason take Manhattan? How did he die in that? I... Fuck. What happens at the end of Jason Takes Manhattan? Oh, the healthy sewage turns him into a little boy. Is that really the entire the end? I think it is. There's no continuity with these. Oh, half the movies add backstory without bothering to check if it's going to fuck with any of the other movies and the other canon. They're almost individual servings. Really, they are. Like... Trying to lace it all up into one story, which they really make an attempt to do here, but it's fuck. So there's the subversion. They kill Jason right there, and he's dead for damn near all the movie. Danny Glover here is uh, got his best Undertaker impression going. I mean, like Undertaker the wrestler. So Danny Glover is trying not to be the Undertaker. They're going to clean up the hot dog head Jason while his heart lay beating on the ground. No, it did just stop beating. Okay. So, basically the reason that this movie comes to be, God damn, that intro looks cheesy. We probably thought it was cool back then. I mean, it's just in retrospect. The computer graphics and shit were horrible. Of course, they had to go through that for them to be where that we have them today. It's a step process, but fuck, that was... Hey, it's Kane Hodder, not in the mask. What do I recognize this dude from? Oh, he's the Don King type character from Rocky V. Yes! Yes! Tommy Gun! Anyway, so Paramount washed their hands essentially of Friday the 13th movies after Jason goes to Manhattan. Manhattan. It was critically a f failure. It was box office wise a failure. So it ended up back in the hands of Sean Cunningham over at New Line. So Sean Cunningham was the creator of Friday the 13th. And he directed the, the original. And Jason was never part of his lore and his movie. His movie was about a mother trying to get revenge for her dead son. So... Although he gets credit for creating the franchise... I don't think that he was ever particularly a fan of the Jason idea in the end, the whole Jason lore and the fact that Jason became the flagship of the franchise when his movie, The Originator, had nothing to do with that. And I don't think he liked the hockey mask too much either. So one of his first orders of business when making this was to get the hockey mask out of there. He told the guy writing it, I don't care what you do, but get that goddamn hockey, hockey mask out of there. So the decision was made to kill Jason and make the movie more of like a body snatcher possession kind of passing the torch of evil so to speak like it's really a departure from a, a traditional slasher and 
what to this point has become known as a Friday the 13th movie. It's almost equivalent to Halloween 3 not having Michael Myers in it. Almost. It is at least loosely related to Jason. It has Jason in the beginning. There's some hallucinations of Jason. It has a character that's supposed to be Jason's sister. And I believe it has Jason back at the end. So there is at least some Jason. And the story is at least based around Jason. Whereas Halloween 3 is no Michael Myers at all. Total bait and switch. So it has to be held a little bit higher because, of, because at least it has Jason in it. But it's almost there. You're really robbing people of what they came to see. And the, that's why the, the rewatchability is so low. Because it's not even really a Friday the 13th movie. So when you're sitting around thinking like, fuck, I, th I think I want to watch a Jason movie. Or I want to watch Friday the 13th movie. You don't even really think of this one. At least I don't. Now, I imagine that there is a minority who, for whom this is probably their favorite Friday the 13th. A salute. Godspeed. Whatever. Much love. That's you're welcome to your opinion. I'm just sharing my opinion, and I don't really I don't like it. Then again, I don't really like many of them. Past five, four, five is debatable. I can watch five. Five is passable for me because I don't get offended by the fact that it's not actually Jason. But um, I think four is probably the last unanimous good one. Like, most people will say that 4 was the last good one, I would say. If you're not including Freddy vs. Jason or the reboot, the original run up through Jason X. So another thing, the reason that this is not Friday the 13th Part 9 and that it's Jason Goes to Hell, A Final Friday, is because... Paramount still owned the rights to the name Friday the 13th, but New Line acquired the rights to Jason. So they were able to call it Jason and use the, 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 the day of the week Friday because nobody can trademark the word Friday or the name Jason. <coughs> and they had the character Jason, so it's, it couldn't be Friday the 13th because Paramount owned that intellectual property, so it had to become... Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Which was the, for, Jason X didn't come out until 2001, I think, and this is like 93-ish. So, there was a long gap. It really was The Final Friday in a way. Oh, I've buried the lead on... So the heart started beating, and I think he's going to eat it, and then he becomes possessed with the spirit of Jason. I'm going to have a hard time with this movie, I'm telling you folks. Just straight out of the gate. This... I'm just... It's just not that interesting in an, almost any way to me. Anyway, the lead I buried... The most crucial aspect of New Line acquiring the, the Jason character is that they were trying to get Freddy vs. Jason done. They had been trying to get Freddy vs. Jason done for quite a while. Uh, actually, clear back since number 7, they've been talking about Freddy vs. Jason. And I even speculated that maybe number seven with him going up against the girl that had that was clairvoyant and had uh, telepathetic powers, etc. That maybe that was a precursor or an attempt to explore what a Freddy versus Jason battle might look like. Because you're going to, of course, have to incorporate Jason into the dream world at some point because that's where Freddy has his power. And... He is kind of omnipowerful in that in that environment. So he's capable, I don't know so much of clairvoyance, but of 
moving things with his mind. And so I feel like it was like a preview of the battle scenes in a way. Like how how can we have someone who doesn't fight physically at least for the most part interact with Jason who is almost entirely brute force that's just total speculation anyway they've been wanting to do Freddy versus Jason for a long long time and they're waiting it's they can't get the rights correct they can't get the the licensing they can't get permission they can't and then it's development hell development hell because you're going to tr you're trying to make two camps of people who don't necessarily have the same ideals in mind happy with so you're trying to take Jason and make this a Jason movie simultaneously make it a Freddy movie and you're trying to appease both camps maybe bring in some new fans at the same time actually make it a worthwhile film because you're most likely not going to do multiple Freddy versus Jason's <coughs> Once you do one, it's basically run its course unless you wait a significant amount of time and do a remake and hope that nobody remembers. So they they decided to just make a, a Jason movie or two while they were waiting for the development on Freddy vs. Jason, and that's how we get this, and that's how we get Jason X. Is It took them, a saw, I think, 15 years or something of development to finally get a script for Freddy vs. Jason done. And finally get everybody to agree that it wasn't damaging their property and their brand, etc., etc., etc. I understand because there's a lot of value attached to those names, but we've also learned in horror that you can make some pretty large mistakes and if you come back with a big enough pop or the right way you can be larger than ever I would say that uh, the Halloween franchise if it's not as popular right now as it's ever been it's close and it's had some treacherous mistakes in the past Halloween 3, which I've just, I've already talked about. Halloween 5 was atrocious. <laughs> Halloween 6 tried to make sense of it all, and it left people scratching their heads. It's, it was an honest attempt, but the, the, the pieces weren't there for it to make sense, I don't honestly. They had a, a resurgence with H2O. Then Resurrection was fucking hot trash lit on fire like it was the worst p steaming pile of human excrement <clears throat> I if you if you ask me which one of the Halloween franchise I would just pluck out it might be resurrection hard to tell anyway I'm getting distracted resurrection kills it how, or Rob Zombie gets to remake it. There's a lot of hype around his remake of the original. It comes out. Mixed reviews, but people are willing to give it a pass, even though it has some flaws. It's Halloween. We're starting over again, and it, we're heading in a fresh direction. Then he shit the bed with Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, obviously. And killed it again. Now, they just had another strong entry with the 2008 Halloween film, bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back and essentially making what is effectively Halloween 3. What would have been the original Halloween 3. No, wait. It was a new Halloween 2. I take that back. Fuck. I think I've misspoke on another podcast once and said that. <clears throat> so they, were, they remade Halloween 2, the original sequel to Halloween. And that was a strong entry. It was a good... It was a pretty good... It was up there, probably in the top three or four in the franchise. People liked it, and it generated a decent amount of hype. So you can recover from things. So I don't know if 15 years of development hell is worth what we got for, for Freddy vs. Jason. That's a lot of fucking hype to build up.
Uh, that's one good thing about the movie. They're they're pretty self aware and tongue in cheek. They make the hamburger patties look like Jason's mask. And so she can save me. Brilliant. I love it. It's a marketing strategy and a cost cutting tool. Guess who's gonna win Employee of the Year? A Voorhees burger. Oh, that's supposed to be Jason's sister. So the quick math that they did that they want us to follow along with is that Pamela Voorhees had this girl out of wedlock. She's a bastard child. And so because of that, she never really loved her. Then she got married and had mongoloid Jason, and he was the apple of her eye, her pride and joy. She couldn't get enough of Jason. And as a result, she gave this girl up for adoption in favor of keeping just Jason. Instead of having her new husband and baby daddy just adopt this girl... Where is the, I, it's, the, the murkiness and the cloudiness of that story is par for the course with this franchise, folks, so I don't know why I even bother to try to parse it out. Oh, hey, the leading dude's back there. One of very few horror movies to have a leading dude. That may, might be another one of their failures. I don't know. And a lot of people say that it's sexist, uh, it's misogynist, but you, uh, it's also a point of psychology, excuse me, psychology, okay? Let's look at pro wrestling. In pro wrestling, they're able to tell a story and have the audience follow along most of the time without ever speaking. And it's based off normal human primal reactions to certain situations. To when someone's vulnerable, to when someone's being bullied, to when someone's boasting, to when someone's cheating. All of that. That's what they play on to get your emotions riled up, to make you root for a certain person. They guide you to root for the person who is the most vulnerable. They will then take someone who appears to not be vulnerable and put them in a situation where they're vulnerable to tilt the tide. There's all these different ways of playing on it and you don't even realize they're doing it. Like when they take someone <clears throat> like Andre the Giant and they have him wrestle three or four guys. It's to make it seem like he might have a chance to lose so you would have a reason to even watch for one. It's to make it seem like he might be vulnerable, and maybe you'll even root for him. When they have somebody who's talking trash and clearly the, quote, cheater, breaking all the rules, using the, the illegal objects, winning by count out, all of that, that's psychology that makes the crowd dislike that person and in turn root for the other person. Sometimes they'll root for somebody just because they want to root against the other person. That's an option, too. That's how heels work. You, you set out to be hated, and that gives shine to whoever you go against. People will automatically root against you. Anyway, the reason I brought this all up, when you have a female lead, no offense, ladies, you are more, excuse me, you are more vulnerable to attack physically than a male lead. I know that we're talking about Jason and the difference between a male and a female trying to attack him physically is negligible. I get that. Either way, resistance would be futile. But I think psychologically, in the audience's mind, they have less time or they have a harder time believing, believing the story when it's a guy. Now, you can call that sexist, but I just think that it's an issue of perceived vulnerability. 
I really think that's all it is. You hardly now. You could make the character. Let's say it's not male and female. You have uh, a character who's the female lead, but she's a badass. She's some Ronda Rousey, or she's a uh, she's proficient in all weapons, like Jamie Lee Curtis is in the new uh, Halloween 2018, right? Except for Jamie Lee Curtis isn't exactly the lead girl. She kind of is, but they use her granddaughter as more the vulnerable one, right? Do you see why the story can't be carried so much by a person who's as physically capable, etc., because you don't feel as sorry for them. You don't feel like it's as inevitable that Jason is going to get them in certain situations. I didn't mean to go on this whole spiel. That's just kind of my take on it. I think that there are situations where maybe they go a little farther than they should in terms of the exploitation, but the girls also all knew what they signed up for and were willing to do it for the money. And if they didn't, another woman would have. That's kind of the problem with that movement, so to speak, is that half, you have a lot of, like, you have, like, half the women bitching that certain stuff is exploitation or turning women into objects, and then the other half are perfectly willing to feed into that by acting that way because it benefits them. So until they can all get on the same page, it's kind of defeating itself. The, the argument doesn't go anywhere for me. Does that make any sense either? Daytime high. Me. <laughs> oh, is this a sleeping bag kill? I was talking right through a, a decent set of titties there. I'm sorry. As we were talking about the, the feminism and the, the exploitation. Is he getting blown in the tent? Oh, this scene was added in, I'm pretty sure. I think this was shot in post, if I don't... If I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. It's hard to remember. Even when I try to absorb information about movies, if it's not a movie I actually care about, I can't even really absorb... Like, I just... It, my brain just sends out a don't care hormone. I don't know what it is. Oh shit. Different Danny Glover is possessed by Jason and killing bitches. Damn, I had forgotten that it wasn't Jason. It was so disappointing when that dude popped out. Is that the reason you made that CD for me, Ma? If I'm not mistaken, these two dated and broke up like two weeks before they had to film this. So they had to be naked and film a love scene with their exes very shortly after breaking up with a bunch of people around watching. Now that's a position of ultimate vulnerability. Am I right, ladies? You know what I'm talking about. That's actually a weird difference between my wife and I. If I have to pee outside, I'll generally go off a ways. I don't want anybody around. I just, I'm, I'll, I'll walk a few, a few paces. My wife, as long as she can squat behind something, she doesn't care. Like, she's normally pretty modest. And, uh... I won't say paranoid, but she's aware of situations where there's vulnerabilities, like with 
taking her purse with her, always making sure the kid's within arm's reach. You know, she's just aware of those kinds of issues. So it seems odd to me that she wouldn't want to walk off a few paces. And I I don't even know why I brought this up. She's going to kill me if she hears that. <laughs> what a beautiful campfire that nobody's been feeding. Oh, it's the return of the Reagan morals to horror. This is a pretty spectacular kill, if I remember right. It didn't show it? What the fuck? He stabs her with the, the post of the sign. It comes from her back through her front and stabs out. And then he lifts it up and it splits her in half down the center of her torso. If it's not in the movie, how did I see it? I know I've seen that before. What the fuck? So they they add, they shot some stuff in post to make it have more kills and be gorier. Then they removed those because they were too gory. Y'all motherfuckers. Shake it fast. Watch yourself. Show me what you're working with. You know if you're wandering into a situation that you fear might be dangerous? It makes it less dangerous if you go slower. The danger goes away if you go slower. It's one, I never understand that about human nature. Oh, I'm worried that this might be dangerous. I'm scared. I'm going to make it take two, three times as long. <laughs> get the shit over with hustle run over there and dump that shit run back speaking of vulnerability you're only in the vortex for a very small amount of time it's like when I'm driving and I see some weird fuckery going on I just get the fuck out of there I don't stop and wait for everything to clear out I clear out I get out of the way of any possible danger. I'm the window of time where anybody can hit me becomes smaller that way. Does that make sense? I'm allowing less opportunity for other people's fuck ups to be an issue. I'm just getting away from them. I know those two things didn't exactly relate, but it's the decision-making process. It's the thought process of this situation worries me. I'm going to get the fuck out of here versus the situation worries me. I'm going to stick around for two, three times as long and see how it pans out. I don't have a goddamn clue what's going on in this movie, <laughs> except for that guy's Jason, and he's gonna kill some people, and the girl in the that worked at the restaurant's his sister. Oh shit! Damn, I don't think I've ever seen that before. He slammed the door on her neck, the car door, and now he's shaving this guy. And I think the director put this in here. Let's be honest, because he's not the most masculine fellow in the world. And he's trying to get laid. And he's trying to go against the stereotype of, like, the explo exploiting women, you know, go with that kind of feminism movement. And work as many compromising situations for men in as possible and kind of even it out. He wanted as many naked men as there were naked women. Um, I don't know. I, maybe it's... I just never come at it from that direction. I don't look at this scene and go, oh my god, look at what they're making this guy do or look what they're making this girl do. I look at it as a story and their characters in a story. And if one of them is doing something to the other one, it's it's part of the character development in the story or 
and to pretend that there's not a ton of actions that the that are done in movies like this that have no relation to the story that's because they're not that good of stories So when he's sitting there sh doing the the naked shave of the dude or whatever, I'm just like, this guy is fucking unhinged. Like, there's something wrong with this guy. I'm actually making almost zero judgment about the guy laying there. A little bit I'm trying to figure out, like, how scary it would be to be stuck in that position. But mostly I'm trying to get into the head of... Because we're not even really dealing with Jason anymore, right? Jason wouldn't do anything like that. Jason is supposed to be inside that guy's body, but he strapped him to this table and he's shaving him. That is not a Jason behavior at all. So they're really changing a lot of things about the franchise in this movie. So, like I was saying, when that scene comes up, I'm putting my head inside the black dude and going... What the fuck is going through the head of a person who wants to strap somebody to a table and then shave them and, like... Oh, now Jason's in this cop? But his reflection is is actually Jason? Oh my god. She blew his brains out. That's good. Stop, drop, and roll. That's also good. 37 minutes and 35 seconds into the movie. 50 minutes left. That's also good. Doing the bull dance. Feeling the flow. Working it. Working it. I'm sorry if I went on like a bunch of rambles about... Uh, feminism and all that shit I just feel like too often people try to turn shit into a battle of the sexes when it doesn't need be and they try to rally behind certain causes <coughs> unnecessarily The call to censor and all that I feel like is greatly exaggerated <clears throat> and uh, I think that when you are looking for everything to be from a certain perspective or have a certain result and you're approaching everything wanting that to be the result you can find that in almost everything does that make sense if you're only looking for one thing you will find it a lot even through confirmation bias or I don't even know how it happens but if you look at it, everything through a single frame of reference such as this is racist this is sexist this is that you start to you would you would start to see correlations in everything because that's all you're looking for and i think that is the case most of, i think people go into films like this and other slashers wanting to be upset about something knowing what they're going to see and bitching about it anyway as if the people involved weren't compensated and didn't do it voluntarily. Nobody held a gun to their head and ordered them to be in these movies. Nobody ordered them to try to be actresses. It's not a God-given right to be an actor or an actress. Like, I don't see who the victim is. I don't see what, what you're trying to accomplish by bitching about nudity in horror films or the fact that the, the lead is always a female or any of that who's the victim what's your goal what are you trying to accomplish I guess occasionally they do do things without consent 
there's a scene in this where Jason, the 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 total recall alien creature, whatever the fuck we're dealing with, that is the spirit of Jason in this film. He go he shoots up in his sister's pussy, and they did that digitally in post, and she had they didn't even ask her permission. She had no idea. That's a weird issue, because. She obviously gave their permission to shoot her, and she did the scene, but there must have been in the contract something stating that they're able to digitally change it in post any way they want, or I wonder if they have developed agreements related to that now that maybe didn't exist then because of issues like that because until we started putting cgi and things like that in films it wouldn't even be something you would have to consider but now it would be something you have to heavily consider you could be filmed doing one thing and they could totally fuck you all up digitally I, and i imagine nowadays they definitely would need your permission for that Who the fuck are these two? I saw the blood stain on the rug. You're not going to hold me for more than a minute, bro. I'm going to tackle your skinny ass to the floor and choke your little pencil neck. I got a letterman's jacket on. Did you see that? You see the hat? Who the fuck is... I don't know what's going on. I, I know who he was. Kind of. What's up, cheekbones? You got some bloody ass pants. I'm just going to wear my Letterman's jacket in jail. That guy looked like he was 35. He's either cast as somebody much younger, which is ridiculous, or he's 35 and still wearing his high school letterman jacket, which is definitely ridiculous. I'm trying to figure out which one is more ridiculous. Would it be more ridiculous for that guy to be cast as a teenager or for him to still be wearing his letterman jacket when he's 35? What do you say? As I look at his face, I can't make the decision. I was going to say people his age get cast to play teenagers all the time, but I don't know about that one. Freddie Prince Jr. and She's All That comes to mind. He was like 20 fucking 8 in that movie. Or I Know What You Did Last Summer. It's all, you know, 30-year-olds playing 18-year-olds in movies made for 15-year-olds. That's the formula. Hmm, I'm going to go with it's more ridiculous that he gets cast as a teenager. Because I think that there are probably quite a few guys in this world that wear their letterman jacket well into their 30s i don't recall seeing one no i'm not talking about like a fan of a sports team and you go out and buy it and wear it and it looks like a varsity jacket i'm talking about a legit shit you actually got for being on the football team in high school there's probably dudes that wear those when they're still in their 30s or wear those well into their 30s i mean 
fuck, if I had gotten one in high school, I might still have it. I don't know if I'd wear it, but I have clothes that I had when I was in high school. Not a lot of them, mostly hats, jackets. I take care of shit. I like it to last. That's probably a growing up broke thing. There's a, there was a line in a G-Unit song, I think it was Lloyd Banks, and he said, when you're broke, you can't afford to fuck your sneakers up. And that is the motherfucking truth. 100. <laughs> so, you learn, you get something nice, best take care of that shit, you want it to be nice for long, and then you learn that if you take care of it, it can be nice for a long time, damn near brand new, for years. And then you start to grow a collection of shit you've been taking care of, and you're good. It's like you're set. And then if something falls out of the mix, you can replace it, and you still got a bunch of shit that looks like it's brand new, because you've been taking care of it. And then you, you set aside a few things that are raggedy for working in the yard or on cars, going to the gym, you know, shit that's meant to be beat up. <laughs> That's one thing that drives me nuts about having a kid. It's, I don't know if it's, if it's different person by person or if it's just a thing about being young or, but if it's just inherently in a quality that my son has, but he doesn't know how to take care of a goddamn thing. I'm, I'm, I would say a major contributor to that is the fact that we aren't nearly as broke as I was growing up and he has just way too much shit, so he does. He underappreciates all of it. When you only have three, four toys, you love all those motherfuckers, and if one of them went missing, you would definitely notice. When you have 150 to 2,000 toys, like I'm looking at out here in his playroom, he has a playroom. Like, this kid is so fucking spoiled, I gotta do something about this. <laughs> like, he doesn't... Nothing, none of it really, he's just so used to ha being surrounded by toys, yet claims he is bored all the fucking time. And as a kid that was very good at entertaining myself, and as somebody to this day who's very good at being, hanging out solo, solemn, inside my own head, alone with my own thoughts, I can do that shit. I'm perfectly comfortable with it. It's actually what I prefer a lot of the time. So for him to just constantly be like, I need, do this, do this, do this, what, can we, I got a question, come play, come out, it's, bro, can you just be a little bit more like me once in a while and just keep yourself entertained? <laughs> Don't you want to just kind of like hide off in the corner and play with your action figures? Because that's what I would have wanted to do. It's hard for me to relate to his urge or his need to want to include us in every single thing he does. That's basically what it amounts to. He doesn't want to do anything unless we're going to do it too. But then once we're going to do it too, he basically wants to boss us around and dictate shit and do everything on his own as if we're not there. But he wants us to be there. Like he asked me to play basketball. But he doesn't really want me to play. He just wants me to stand there while he shoots the ball and catch it and throw it back to him. He starts complaining if I do something else. And I'm like, dude, this is essentially the same as you playing basketball by yourself. Why don't you just play basketball by yourself? If I walk away, he's done. He comes inside and then starts asking me to do something else. My wife picked up some volleyball badminton net set thing at the store. He was badgering me for like a week to set it up. I told him I set a specific day. I said, the next time I mow the lawn is gonna be on Thursday. On Thursday, I will set up your net. I did exactly what I told him I was gonna do. I mowed the lawn, I set up his net. He used it for about 20 minutes that day and then hasn't even looked at it since. It's been like three, four weeks. He hasn't even thought about play. Hasn't even asked me if I wanna play with it. Like just the fact that it was in the box and it was something that could be done was enticing to him but once it was all set up and we could play he was no longer interested and that's the story with a lot of stuff with him it's a struggle even food 
I'll let him pick what he wants to eat, and then I have to argue with him about eating it. It doesn't make any motherfucking sense to me. Or he'll say he wants something, and we'll say, no, we'll go there tomorrow, or we'll eat that tomorrow. And then when tomorrow comes, he won't fucking eat it. Oh. Trying to get him to eat is like pulling teeth. I don't understand that either. I treat eating like it's a job and not one that I get paid hourly for. I'm trying to get that shit done with, like it's per piece. To me, eating is something you have to do, but ultimately that is a waste of time. So I'm trying to get in and get out. I'm just get, and especially if I'm hungry, just get it in, just get it in my stomach, get it in me. Just get this booze in you. And just be good. But him, it's take a bite, start dancing around, start talking, start doing this, start doing that. Even if we're just sitting at the dining room table and there's no distractions, he can't help but try to make himself distracted. Now you're probably telling yourself that sounds like ADD, and you're probably right. I had a touch of it myself. Uh, but I don't want to drug him up. I just don't want to do that. I'm just trying to ride out the storm until he starts to have things that he's interested in and we can appropriately harness that energy and focus. Because I... He has shown in the past that if, if he is interested in, 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 in something, like truly, he can focus on it for an extended period of time. Solo, even. Not be hopping around, not be talking a mile a minute. He will focus on one task, but it has to be just certain specific tasks. And it's only sporadically that he finds one. But he will hone in on something and do that for an hour or two. And it's like, oh my gosh, you hear Hallelujah playing in the background, a nice crescendo. It's like a miracle. And so, but it's so touch and go. But as he gets a little bit older, let's say he becomes really interested in a sport or in art or in playing an instrument, then we can kind of channel his endless energy into something that is productive for him and that he can express himself through at the same time. Right now, he's just bouncing off the damn walls all the time and exhausting us. I swear, I, ha I set out, there's days, when he was little, when he was like three or four, I could set out to exhaust him, like, okay, here's going to be the plan. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, and his little legs aren't going to be able to keep up, and by the time we're home, he's going to fall asleep in the car, and, and he's going to be exhausted for the day, and it would work. And now that he is the, almost six, shit doesn't work anymore. He's just got an endless battery. I cannot run him out of energy. So what happens is it gets to be the evening time and all I want to do is sit down and he's still going and that's when I don't have patience for it. I'm like, man, can you just, you can sit out here with me and watch a movie or something, but can you just calm down, please? Added to that is the fact that I generally, I think I, I carry a higher level of stress and anxiety, almost in perpetuity, than the average person. I'm just always at kind of this heightened, anxious, stressed out level. And uh, I know you can't tell by the calmness in my voice, smooth silk that you hear caressing your eardrums right now. But just, it, it comes and goes, but for... major portions of the day, I spend stressed out about time, about the future, about if I'm doing a good enough job as a dad. Like, I get into my head and I get myself worked up about stuff like oh my god I'm just I'm failing at this I'm failing at that and I, I'm uber hard on myself and I think that that voice comes from how my parents were on me as a kid I was never really allowed to get away with much I was ridden pretty hard and you call that what it what you want but it has served me well I I'd never got in trouble 
mostly because I was deathly afraid of getting in trouble, but it, it suited me nonetheless, or served me nonetheless. And so now I'm, I've kind of got like, I just never quite feel like I'm doing enough, and that leads to like an anxiety and a stress. And I make the mistake frequently of budgeting my time throughout the day as if I'm not going to have to spend a significant portion dealing with my son. And that's my mistake. That's just naivety, uh, call it what you want, or not being objective. But realistically, I have to look at the situation and say there's going to be significant chunks of the day where I can't reliably count on doing anything work-related or productive this time has just got to be set aside to interact with the family and that's something that i've had to get better at i've gone through kind of stages in this learning process of being a husband being a dad learning what that's all about I and mean, when i first found out how i had a kid it was just make money that was it just i have to support this family that has to be the main thing i have to make sure that they don't need anything we're not going to starve we are going to have a place to to live He's going to have clothes. He's going to have, like, all that kind of shit's running. Like, that has to be secured. So, from that point forward, that became, like, my main... It was everything in the name of making money to support the family. And it got to a point where I realized, okay, now I'm, I'm almost focusing on this too much to the detriment of the family. Like, maybe I've got to reel it in a little bit and not worry so much about supporting the family and actually just enjoy the fact that there is a family because he's already almost six like i i don't want to spend his entire childhood busting my ass and then oh i got money saved up i'm ready to relax and he's gone so I've, I've had to make adjustments in that regard, but then I don't want to get complacent and feel like I'm static and I'm not pushing it towards anything. So how much do I push on the pedal? When do I let, like, it's all very, and I've got to start building more stuff into his life. He needs to start doing extracurriculars. He's going to be starting school soon. He needs, like, he needs to, to I need to take him camping. All that shit. So it's just a lot to work in. Plus, I'm still married to the newspaper game, effectively, so my weekends are eaten up. So that's another thing that stresses me out. Even though I'm doing fine financially at the moment, I really want to break away from that. And that is a significant portion of my income. That's going to be a major jump. That's a very scary and stressful situation to get myself into. Ultimately, for the better. But when you don't have... A nine to five when you're a 1099 or you're freelance or or you work in e-commerce or you don't there's no schedule where those checks come in the mail or direct deposit or whatever or when buyers show up to your site when they buy shit from your ebay store there's no guarantee that that's gonna stuff's gonna happen and it definitely doesn't happen on a schedule or the same routine you can have averages and a certain amount you could probably count on but you definitely wouldn't bet on it. You, there's no guarantees in that game. Not the same as having a nine to five job. So there's a lot more risk associated with that. And it's a lot scarier of a situation to get involved in because then even, even if it feels like it's going well now, how secure are you for six months from now? And if it all goes downhill, how long can you support yourself until you figure out the next thing? It's all the questions we have to ask ourselves. Is this even a movie commentary anymore? I'm sorry, guys. I decided to come over to the patio door and smoke a cigarette. I haven't looked at the TV in 15 or 20 minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and claim that it's still a movie commentary, though, because I'm definitely not watching this movie again. And I gotta get through the series, the franchise, call it what you will. I think there's like Jason, he possessed some people, and he like killed some people, and then he possessed a different person, and killed a different person. There's a girl that was his sister, and there was a girl that was naked, and there was a guy that was naked, and, and Jason, while he was in one of the people, shaved the naked guy. 
Uh, and then he was a bald guy, and he was a black guy. I don't know if he's been a girl yet. And then he was like the alien from Alien or Total Recall, or he's a little like worm thing. Uh, and he's a hot dog head. And there's a guy in jail wearing a letterman's jacket. Wouldn't they take your jacket from you when they put you in the jail cell? Don't they like give you the minimal amount of clothing? Just a banana hammock and toe socks. Grape smugglers. For those of you who don't know, I did kind of a testing the waters commentary episode for the pilot episode of Game of Thrones. I was kind of interested in going back and seeing if I could explore some of the details of the show I might miss, to put together some pieces that maybe I didn't even know were there, maybe make a little bit more sense of the, the disaster of an ending, but just kind of soak it all in again back when it was great. And uh, I was wondering if there was people who were interested in going along on that journey with me. To this point, the answer is not at all. But it also doesn't make it into the same realm as my movie commentaries. It's not in the same playlists, etc. So there might be people who are subscribed to my channel who aren't aware of it. So now you are. If you're interested, it's like the second to last video posted on my channel. It's the, the, the thumbnail is a picture of Khaleesi's eggs when she receives them at the wedding with the call. Anyhow. These two are talking, and it is very impactful. It is profound. It is groundbreaking. I guess uh, they just forgot about Jason. How you doing? Man, it is a nice day outside. I've walked out on my patio if you hadn't noticed. It's so weird recording one of these during the day. Maybe that's why I'm having less or uh, more trouble focusing on the movie itself is because it's the middle of the day and I'm just not used to doing this. Come on, Mary Jane. My pit bull is almost 10 years old and she has hip dysplasia, so it takes her a minute to get inside. Good girl. Are you a good girl? Yeah. That's a sad conversation I don't want to have at the moment. <laughs> don't shoot. Don't shoot. I've had her almost my entire adult life. Damn, cop just molly whopped him. Oof, that's why he's wearing the Letterman jacket. So we know he's a football player. And when he does that spectacular tackle, we can connect the dots and it makes sense. We're like, oh, that's why he's got like a Bill Goldberg level spear. He's wearing a Letterman jacket. He's clearly a varsity football player. I can buy it. put a letterman jacket on anybody and all of a sudden they become a spectacular tackler shoulder block the shit out of you <clears throat> you don't get in this cup what the fuck is going on right now uh, are these guys supposed to be twins or something that's I ha would have to cuff your hands behind your back and you'd have to give me the gun first, buddy. I had enough of these motherfucking Jasons in this motherfucking police station. That wasn't a very impressive throw over the counter. I get that it's hard to throw somebody over a counter with one hand, but... What is this weird zombie movie? What the fuck? This is 
such a departure from a Friday the 13th movie. It's crazy. I've never seen Halloween 3, but I imagine this is how people feel watching Halloween 3. Like, at least the first time. How did I... I'm really trying to remember how I came to own this. Because... I would have never bought it. Unless there was a box set. Unless I bought a box set. Which I might do someday. And it was just, you know... You're not going to leave one out. So, as part of a set, I may get it, so, but... No offense, whoever bought it for me, if you're listening. I get where your heart was at. I understand how the decision was made. It's the thought that counts, and I'm putting it to use now. <laughs> it's just... Just not what I would have picked for myself. <laughs> Fuck. 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 Oh shit, Apollo Creed dressed like a cowboy. So Is Don King already dead? We're not going to get a Don King versus Danny Glover, aka Apollo Creed. AKA Carl Weathers Showdown. Is that an airsoft gun? It's shaped weird. What kind of video game shit is this? Does he have a tattoo on his forehead? He's Mike Tyson before Mike Tyson. Is this supposed to be Grease? Don't spin that shit around, Junior. He was way off to the side. He wasn't going to shoot his dick. He would have shot himself in the thigh. Oh, this fucking asshole. He's never shot a gun in his life. Looks like he's never held one before either. I guess tiny. We started the rave. Sorry. Turn the strobe lights on. Where's the EDM? I don't even have anything. My mind is blank trying to come up with something to say while watching this. I should address that while Sean Cunningham did not he asked that the hockey mask be removed. I don't think he was ultimately happy with the final product, including almost zero Jason. But that would pose the question, how did the final product get made without him knowing that this is, like, he didn't look at a script or anything. He just said make sure you remove Jason's mask run along I'll see it when it's done <sighs> returning the franchise back to the original creator you would think would be the best thing you could do to rejuvenate the franchise you would think that you would be returning to the glory days of the old and that he would really have some fresh ideas for how to take this thing 
and instead you get this. Like, I imagine there was people, like real fans, who were like, oh my god, Sean Cunningham is back, and they're doing Jason Goes to Hell. It's back in the creator's hands. They're going to do this right. This is going to be amazing. Plus, there was actually a gap, finally, between Jason Takes Manhattan and this. There was four years. At least a little bit of time for an appetite to build for people instead of getting them year after year after year after year like before. So the disappointment that people must have felt going into a theater and seeing this with almost zero Jason in the film... It must have been such a disappointment because the expectations, like I said, would be that the creator is going to bring the fire. Like he's going to come in hot with some some tremendous shit. Not a totally different. This is like it's just a totally different kind of movie. And I gave a whole long spiel earlier about how you can recover from bad movies and franchises. This is a hard one. Because this one comes nine movies deep. This really is the end of this timeline. I, maybe Jason X is supposed to occur along the same, quote, life of Jason and I guess Freddy versus Jason is supposed to occur somewhere in there as well but there's really no attempt to follow up on this in any type of direct fashion and this isn't even really an attempt to follow up on Jason Takes Manhattan in any t direct way one they didn't have the rights they kind of have to start out of the blue they don't get to refer to any of that old footage or any of that shit so they can't really acknowledge the ending in that way. They could pick up from there without acknowledging it. That would be a little bit difficult to deal with. Uh, and possibly they might get in trouble for infringing upon the copyright of the original movie. I'm not sure how that works. Not the original of Jason Takes Manhattan. What the fuck are we... This is reminding me of the Friday the 13th TV series. It's just like... Stuff is possessed or has a crazy story and is magic and... This is like a really long episode of Tales from the Crypt. He reminds me of Danny Glover and Switchback. Is that the name of the movie? The movie with Jared Leto and uh, Dennis Quaid? Randy Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Fuck. I can't remember which Quaid is which. I've never been able to do that. I can never remember which one's which. God damn it. I have a laptop right there. I could, I could look it up. But then I would get super distracted from the movie, and this is very important stuff. She's not laying on that at all. It's definitely going through her. <laughs> it's, just, it's so clearly just laying on the floor. What is this voice you're talking in, dude? Jason will have hopped into a new body by now. You can't trust anyone. Oh, shit. Rebar through the femur. Am 
And when Jason goes into these people's bodies, he can talk. Just not in his own body. Maybe Jason never could speak. Maybe he was a mute. That's why nobody heard him when he was drowning. That might be a major piece to the puzzle I just discovered. Is Jason a mute? Muted in color. I don't even know whose baby this is for for me to be able to understand the importance of... I'm getting tired of watching people choke up pieces of dog shit like this, though. What in the fuck? I hate this thing so much. Look at this bright of Chucky piece of shit. Or, uh, seed of Chucky. I guess Bride of Chucky. It looks like the baby at the end of Bride of Chucky. Because in Seed of Chucky, they're the goofy green motherfucker with the English accent. And that movie's disaster, too. I had about as much trouble watching that as I did watching this. Julia Carpenter? Is that supposed to be a John Carpenter reference? What's funny is, before I set out doing movie commentaries and reviews, that part right there where the thing runs into her vag, she didn't know that that was going to be on there until she saw it in theaters. Fuck, what was I talking about before that? Oh, before I started doing movie commentaries and reviews, I really wouldn't have had such strong opinions about what is the worst movie in a given franchise, what is the best movie, whereas I do more so now. I really have it, like, divided up in my head. And I don't know if that makes it easier or harder to rewatch them in the future. Because now I'm just going to think, oh, like, well, these are the best couple. Why don't I just watch one of these? Then I'm going to ignore the other ones. Maybe that's better for me. Why do I subject myself to such torture? Oh, this is, this movie is like, to me, is like the, the bunny is it bunny pajamas that Ralphie gets in a Christmas story and he's told he has to wear them when whoever comes to visit that gave it to him like the reason that I probably still have this movie in my collection at all is so that whoever gave it to me can't come over and see that it's missing and ask me what happened to it <laughs> I I to this point, I've probably kept it in my collection just to appease whoever gave it to me if they came over to visit. And nobody ever comes over to visit, so you be the judge of that situation. Don't I seem like a likable and social guy? I'm congenial, right? Now he's back to being regular Jason? I don't understand. I don't understand. If you could be somebody else, why would you want to be Jason? Talk about having no self-awareness. Or I guess not giving a fuck. He'd rather look like that than, than look like anybody else. He... Well... He hasn't really exhibited superhuman strength or anything uh, as he throws that guy up on top of the... <laughs> what is it? Are they in a playground? Oh. Been scared of that my entire life. 
Well, at least on Tuesdays. The strength and just the... What are we doing now? She got him with King Arthur's magic sword. What in the fuck is this? Now he's a Roman candle? What the fuck am I watching? Is this turning into a child's play movie? Give me the power, I beg of you! Get him, Kenny. This guy's a knucklehead. Punching technique's terrible. Oh, sidekick. In more ways than one. She was Letterman Jacket's sidekick, and she fully penetrated Jesse, Jesse, Jason's torso with a sidekick to the handle of the dagger. Now, what the fuck are these weird, huge hands? Oh my god, this doesn't make sense at all. She thought about it for a good minute before she went over and tried to help him. Bruh. Why are my hands so huge? Can you come to where I am? What the f God, that looked goofy. You see what I mean about the CGI back then. We were just barely figuring it out, and it was pretty tacky looking. It sucks because there's probably movies that would be great today if not for the goofiness of the digital effects they tried to put in them back in the day before we had it. I won't say perfected because we don't have it perfected now. They still can't get certain shit right. And I'm wondering how much of that is based on budget. Like if a movie had unlimited budget to really try and figure out every little aspect of their CGI and get it 100% accurate, how well could they do? So I watched Detective Pokemon or Detective Pikachu with my son yesterday and uh it seems like they just didn't have the money to make the Pokemon look as realistic as they could. It seemed like it was done cheap and quick. Like they were first drafts, like they didn't have the right texture and stuff to them. The lighting wasn't right. It worked because it's just a, you know, cheesy little kid movie, but I was noticing it as I was watching it. I was like, this seems like they didn't have the money to really refine these characters fully. Other than Pikachu himself. All the other Pokemon looked like cartoon characters. Oh, see? Freddy versus Jason. So now that they, once they commit to that, that's why Jason X has to be way in the future, because they don't want to fuck with the Freddy vs. Jason timeline at all. So after all that, it was the dagger to the chest that finally sent Jason to hell. I'm still not fully sure what I just watched, what just happened. Kane Hodder listed twice because he played two roles. Did he get paid twice? Listed three times now. I've seen Kane Hodder's name on this thing three times. He gets paid once per listing, right? That's how I'd want it to be. I'd negotiate that in my contract. Each time my name appears in the credits, I get paid my salary once. All right, folks. That's going to wrap it up for this half-assed 
commentary on Jason Goes to Hell. I apologize if you were looking forward to me talking about the movie more. Or at all, because I really didn't. Um, I just couldn't get into it. It's just... Uh, not one of my favorites in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I got sidetracked on several different tangents, and I just went with it. I, I started doing the movie commentaries mostly as a way to give me something to talk about and give me a direction to go with my thoughts, or at least something to think about to in turn turn into verbiage to put on track. So when I kind of get in a groove and I start feeling something and I just start talking about it, I'll just go with the flow sometimes to kind of exercise that muscle and get used to that so as someday I may not be so reliant on doing movie commentaries when doing a podcast and I may be able to just sit down and riff and talk about certain subjects and move from one to the other and I'll be more comfortable doing so because of ones like this where I get off track. I appreciate you guys sticking through that. Like, share, subscribe, all that good shit. Check me out. Just type Average Podcast into Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google it, whatever the fuck. Until the next time, this is Devin signing off and saying, be easy.